Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. God works through covenant. Think about that for a second. All of the institutions, the three spheres that I listed earlier, home, church, and state, they're all based on covenant. How are children reared in the fear and admonition of the Lord? Well, it starts, for those of you who don't know, boys and girls, it starts when a man loves a woman. (laughs) And what does he do? He covenants with her. They covenant with one another in the Lord. There is a ceremony. There are vows. Those vows are consummated. We can talk about that when you get older. And, And then down the line, children are brought into this covenant as a blessing given from the Lord. But the basis of healthy children and a healthy family and children feeling secure is covenant. Did you know statistically, a boy, I don't know about for girls, but I remember very vividly the statistics for boys. A boy whose parents divorce and where the mother gets primary custody over the son, um, he actually experiences more problems in life than if his father died. Do you know why? Because if the father died, the mom, in general, would talk about his dad, who is completely absent, but who was a hero. Dad would be spoken of in positive terms. But in divorce, sadly, in divorce, both parents, but especially if the mother has primary custody, dad is not spoken of as a hero. And so the son grows up knowing I, but I, I'm like dad. I see him on the weekends or the summer. I look like him. I have some of his mannerisms. Every year that passes, I, I, I'm growing into dad, and mom tells me he's a monster. I guess I am too. So it's with covenant. That's the blessing. That's the framework for blessing and prosperity and life and nourishing and goodness. It's in covenant. In the home, the covenant of marriage. In the state, there is a sense of covenant. That's how our whole founding happened. With America, it was the idea that from, they looked at Deuteronomy. They literally, they looked at Deuteronomy and the Pentateuch, the Bible, and they said, look, God lays out the terms of the covenant with Israel. And Israel gives their consent. Now, God, of course, would be Lord regardless but, but there's something significant of this Magna Carta, this, this contractual, consensual, mutual agreement. That God says, I will be your God and you shall be my people if you love me with all of your heart, if you keep to my commandments and this and that, and this is what I will do for you, and this is what is required of you, O oh man. And three times Israel says, we will do all that the Lord has commanded. We will do all that the Lord has commanded. And so from that principle of God and the way that he governed the nation state of Israel, our founders came up with the idea that government is not, it is not that the king is over the law, but the law is over the king, lex rex. That the law stands supreme as a transcendent universal authority above any man. That the highest, highest official is not a human official, but a document. It is a law, and it is contractual, and there is consent from the governed, and there is representation, and there's, that's, that's the existence of our nation. It's not a coincidence that the United States of America has been the most prosperous nation in the last 250 years, bar none. And all these oppressive white colonizers also with America happen to be the most generous nation that has blessed every other nation in the world more than anyone else, bar none. Oh, and I'm sure it's unrelated, just a coincidence, it's also the nation that tried to set up a government based off of the principles in in the Bible. Or here's the alternative, God, God knows what he's doing. And we should get back to that. But the point is, in the home, marriage, covenant is the basis. In our nation, the state, covenant is the basis. If somebody migrates into our country and does it legally, there there is a process for citizenship. There is a covenant. There is an agreement. There are stipulations, requirements. We will provide these things. You must uh, do these things. There must be an agreement. You must pass this test. You must give your consent. These kinds of things. It's a covenant. And so, too, in the church... This is the final point. In the church of God, the visible church, 
invisible church, you guys hear me use these terms a lot. Let me explain them because I don't always explain them. I apologize for that. The invisible church is every legitimate, bona fide, born-again Christian who has ever lived. The invisible church includes Paul, Peter, James, and John. It includes Athanasius. It includes Augustine, maybe Aquinas. It includes, you know, all, all these different guys. It includes Luther and Calvin and Zwingli. It includes the Puritans. It includes Edwards. It includes Spurgeon. It includes you and I if you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The invisible and universal church that is in our creed, which is, by the way, the one thing that I revised from the Apostles' Creed, it actually says lowercase c Catholic church, which means universal. But a lot of people, I don't just, I don't have time every single Sunday to explain to every single visitor why we said we believe in the Catholic church. And then I get up here and rag on Catholics. So I, you know, instead of that confusion, confusion, I just put the definition right there, universal and invisible church. So the universal invisible church, it is all over the world. It's global, but it's also all throughout history. Everyone who has ever lived in any place and whoever will live who has faith in Jesus, who is truly born again. That is the true church, the invisible church. But the visible church, global, universal, invisible church, that's one thing. But local visible church is also biblical and important. This is what we would call the church institute, the institution of the church. It is visible and it is local. And there has to be a way, just like with the state, we have borders, we have citizenship, just like with a home, right? It's like, well, who's my spouse? Uh, the one that you made vows with, that one. Like there's, there, are, there are metrics, there are guardrails, there are methods of determining who am I in covenant with and who am I not? Who is in this organization and who is not? We do that at the level of the state. We do that at the level of the family. And the Bible says in Matthew 16 and Matthew 18 that we are required to do this at the level of the church. Big news. Really big news. Our next Right Response Conference is in the works. We've got a number of things already lined up and organized. This is what we've got so far. The whole conference, three days long on post-millennialism, and theonomy. And the speakers, Dr. James White, Dr. Joseph Boot, Gary DeMar, and of course yours truly, Pastor Joel Webbin. We've got a great lineup. We've got great topics. If you want to find out dates and location and registration and anything else, go and visit our website, rightresponseconference.com. rightresponseconference.com.